Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Shy Town Sports Podcast. I am Brad Heesby, of course, joined with Ben Niewanner. Today we got two topics. Theo Epstein stepping down from his president of operations with the Chicago Cubs um, to an assumed smaller role. role. We'll dive into that. Um, and some NBA draft news because the NBA drafts in 28 hours away from the time of recording, 29 hours away. And Ben and I are hyped, even though it's probably the worst draft in our lifetime. Um, we're going to start with some Cubs though. Um, Theo Epstein, this was rumored about a month and a half to two months ago that he would be stepping down, um, or maybe just retiring. I actually wouldn't be shocked if he retires from baseball. Tim Beatson said, what's up? Don't you have class? Tim Beatson, thank you for the question. It's not really a question though, because our class is done. Tim, you are in class and I would hope you would go back to class. I think you're in math class. Um, so your teacher will not be happy about that. Um, spent nine years with the Cubs, many years before with the Padres and the Red Sox net worth is 25 million. He's 46 years old. He's doing well. I think he could go off into the sunset and be perfectly fine. Chris, my little brother said, I have class in nine. Chris, don't be late for class. Um, but yeah, what do you think, Ben? Let's get your insight on this. Well, we all know Theo Epstein is a great baseball mind. Led two teams to World Series, and he's clearly a talented uh, general manager slash president of baseball operations, which was his role with the Cubs. I think he lands somewhere else. I don't know where. I don't think he's done with baseball yet. I, I think that um, he's only 46. I think that there's time for him to just maybe take a few years off see what opportunities open up, but I'm sure there will be opportunities for him. Uh, and I think he'll land with another team in the next five years, maybe take on a rebuild. Uh, he's clearly skilled with that. He rebuilt both the Cubs and the Red Sox. So we'll just see where it goes. I don't think he's done with baseball. <sighs> I don't know. Because, Ben, we see this so many times, right? We've seen this with many other general managers, coaches, just – they grind so hard for so long, and they've gotten to the World Series. He's got, he's at, he has two World Series. Um, he has good, um, good connections still. It's not like he's done any barn burnt, like, he hasn't done anything terrible. Um, the Cubs sure are not in the greatest spot right now, and I think it's smart for him to step down, and I think it's good for both sides. I think the Cubs need a new house. I think it wouldn't be the worst if Jed Hoyer also set, steps down. The current general manager... We'll see if he stays in that role. He followed actually Theo Epstein. I'm pretty sure from San Diego to Chicago, or he was in San Diego, I think. Jed, yeah, I, yeah. Um, I don't think he was on the Red Sox though. I think Theo was the general man. I don't know. There's so many different roles. Um, but with Theo Epstein stepping down slash departing, I think Jed Hoyer does the same. Um, and yeah. But he broke the curse, and that's all you can ever ask for. He got us a World Series. So I'm still very happy with the Cubs, even though I think we have a lot more talent and we should produ- be producing a lot more than we currently are. Yeah, the Cubs right now are kind of at a crossroads, I'd say. Uh, it's been a little while since we've really been in contention for the World Series. It's I'd say 2017 was our last year where I thought we, we probably had a realistic shot at it. So something needs to be done, obviously. New general manager... I don't think we're heading for a rebuild quite yet. Still got a lot of great assets. Uh, Absolutely. And I mean, this is a team that could, with a few more pieces, contend. Like, I don't think we need to abandon ship quite yet. Maybe unload. I mean, Chris Bryan or Javi Baez, we can't. Chris Bryan, can. get him out of here. I, I think I agree with that. Uh, but Javi Baez's play last year was concerning. Hopefully he bounces back. Uh, we need him to bounce back. If he doesn't bounce back, then we're in trouble. But. If our players bounce back, which they should, the offense was so bad last year. There's no way it can be that bad again. I want to. I want to be. I want to be opposed to letting both of them sail and taking on maybe a Trevor Bauer or taking on a few younger guys, um, in the outfield, um, and some relief pitchers. I love our infield. I really do. I think it might be the best infield in baseball. Um, of course, maybe with the exception of the Braves. Yeah. I really, really like our young talent. Sure, it's not. As good as it could be, of course, Loy Jimenez. Don't even get me started on that trade. Um, I'm taking a look at the depth chart now. I love Nico. Love uh, David Bodie. 
Um, I still think Anthony Rizzo is really, really good. <sighs> shortstop's an issue. Um, we can always put Ian Happ at second and then put Nico at shortstop, which I think would be perfectly fine. Um, I love Cartini. I love uh, Contreras. They're both on small deals. Jason Hayward's here for a little bit longer, and I really like Jason Hayward. Um, I think he's very underrated in baseball, even though he wins all these awards. Just his leadership and the type of person he is makes a huge difference in the locker room and things we don't see. Almora, I still believe in. I think it was a fluke 2020 for him. Um, he's still a little bit young. Kyle Schwarber, I think, is improving a lot in the outfield. Um, nice. Another fluke 2020, but I don't think... I'm not a fan of Kyle Schwarber. You know, I, I think Baez and Bryant, we should let go. Pitching-wise, yeah. Darvish had a great year. Hendricks is solid, as always. Um, I Alose, I had high hopes for Alec Mills. We get another starter or two. We, st- we, do a- we still have Quintana and Chatwood. Um, but I think we're going to need one more starting pitcher. And of course, just a full dump of the relief pitching. Um, but yeah, well, go ahead, Ben. Some, to win, Theo Epstein was in win now mode in 2016, obviously. Made some trades that down the road hurt us. Uh, Glaber Torres and Eloy Jimenez, those two guys. If the Cubs had those two guys right now, one of the best teams Dude, we, in baseball. Yeah, for sure. I mean, but we but won. But Ben, I, I don't blame him for that. I don't, I don't blame, blame him for that. I don't blame him for all the shit. If we right lose now. the World Series and we don't have one still, I'm livid. But we won, um, which is a very hard feat, especially breaking the curse. Um, yep. it so it's not the win. end of the world. Huge it was win. a huge, yeah. absolutely huge win. Um, and I, think and I credit you. I've seen a Jed Hoyer with that. Legacy is breaking the curse. That's what he'll go down. And that's why I'm saying go off, in the, go off into the sunset. You got your World Series. We're happy. Chicago loves you. Yeah, we'll see Let's, what he does. We'll, we'll see. see what he does. Let's talk basketball, Ben. If you guys don't remember, I'm actually going to pull up the exact date here um, and Let's link it that. in the chat, even though I don't think you guys can see it, except for the current live stream. Uh, second round prospect. What do we want to do? Do uh, just want to do the mock draft? Full sixty. You know our second round NBA mock draft is our like second most viewed video. <laughs> yeah. Hey, really there are sense. some big fans. I think we should go with at least full 60. Full 60? Okay, we can go full 60. I'm down to talk NBA draft. Um, I linked it there in the comments. I don't, yeah, that won't help any of you guys out. You flipped with me. We like this better. I actually like I, I look better on the right side. I don't we think can, Ben looks can, better on the chill. left side. We can chill. We can chill? This. Eh. I, I like right shame. side better. Let's can, stay right can, side. Okay. Um... At least my top 60, I don't even know if I got Ben's. Oh, wait, no. I think I did. Should be in the same dock. Shoot. Technical <sighs> and you want to talk about, like, just talk about the Bulls. Talk about who they should be drafting. Let, like, get the viewers. Honestly, the, the Bulls, in my opinion, there's three prospects that are kind of the clear cut top three guys in this draft. Or at least, Brad, I don't know if Brad agrees with me on this. Uh, he's not a fan of LaMelo. But I think LaMelo Ball, Anthony Edwards, and James Wiseman are far and away the three best prospects in this draft class, even though LaMelo's had his struggles. I think LaMelo is not going to finish as the top 10 best player in this draft. I just want you to know that. He's he's put this on record. His brother Lonzo, while he hasn't been quite as good as hoped, I think he's still a productive NBA player. I think LaMelo has more potential than Lonzo. I think think Lonzo is better than LaMelo by a good bit, and I don't think LaMelo will ever be a starter on a team for more than like a game. Okay, I really cool. think he's a second you, you round talent. On we you do. Think he's a second round talent. Wow. I okay. don't think he's good. I just, I just don't think he's good. We'll see how that prediction. Works we, out. we will see. It's but a think, very bold prediction. I and think contradicts draft, many. The top three players drafted will be Lamelo Ball, Anthony Edwards, and James Wiseman in no particular order. I don't know how that order will work, but I think the Bulls will have to decide on whether they want the remaining players or if maybe trade. Or trade down. We we have options here. I I just, like just I, trade the pick. Just trade the pick, Artinius. Please just trade the pick. They, this is such a bad. Been, this is such a bad draft. But they've never been this high. They got lucky in the okay, lottery. Okay, we trade it for Bradley Beal, dude. Bradley oh. Beal is such a stud. He's we get Bradley Beal for this pick, and we get Bradley Beal, and our defense turns to Malat. Like just give a march. Give a march. I don't care. Give a march. 
Give oh, Arch. Chris Dunn and Shaq Harrison got the boot, Ben. Very good for Sh- very good for Arch. You know what it's bad for? This defense, which is already terrible. Those oh, might have been I know, I know, I know, I know. Players. I don't know uh, what I don't know what our team is doing. I I, I, I call Wendell Carter our best, but I think Chris Dunn's the best defensive player on the Bulls. I think he's one of the NBA best full mock team. draft. Let's go. We got it. Let's go. But I think the Bulls either go with a defensive. Oh, this this is before. Or we trade the pick oh, away, but lottery. I don't want Bradley Beal. I'll, I'll tell you that. Don't think he helps the team enough. Um, dude, Isaac Okoro. Yeah, I did. I have it. Isaac Okoro. I think we'll go to the Hawks, which are picking below us. I think he's perfect for the Hawks. I don't think we. Can I think he's doing. He's from Georgia, but really quickly. Happy birthday, man! Woo! Thank you, it was Ben's. It was Ben's birthday, birthday yesterday. yesterday. Yeah. Sweet sixteen. Um, in COVID times, there's no. We're gonna to get. We're gonna give him some prime rib and some king crab, but COVID, so we can't do that. Um, we'll do it next year, Ben. King crab, um, and a big, big piece of meat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> will be very good for your birthday. We'll celebrate it because we can't really celebrate it now, COVID and it's tough. freezing up here in Chicago. COVID is very tough, screwing up a lot of our plans. I know I personally was supposed to be going down south to Florida for Thanksgiving. No longer happening. Um, yeah. um, so I guess I'm stuck here in Chicago. At least and I get to watch football and sleep in my own bed. I'll say that. There's positives to everything. We can look at the positives. Wait, do you have the do you have the mock bread? I do. Do you want me to screen share it? You briefly screen share. Uh, here we go. I'll exit out so they can see it. And I'm actually gonna. I can. Is yeah. One fifty. Yeah. There we go. But we, I should have been doing this whole time. What the hell am I doing? So the problem here is that obviously the order is a little off. But just take it. We also had the top 60 players, which I can screen share. Um, yeah, that like, might be better. You want to do that? Okay. Because our order is off here because we made this before the lottery. Top 60. Boom, boom, boom. 150. Perfect. You like that, yeah. Ben? Yeah. Good. James Maybe. Wiseman at number one. I love James Wiseman. I really think he will be the only all-star player in this draft. I like Anthony Edwards. I thought Anthony Edwards coming out of high school was the number one player. Um, but he just couldn't shoot jumpers and three-pointers at Georgia. Um, he was the number one guy on the team against a lackluster SEC, and he didn't do much. And that really just led me to believe he... Now, sure, maybe if they make a run in the SEC tourney, my, my thoughts change. Um, and... The, COVID honestly probably helped James Wiseman because he was the number one guy out of high school on pretty much all the recruiting sites. And he played a very good eight or nine games before leaving to pursue um, the draft full time. But, but yeah, LaMelo. Everyone knows LaMelo. I said played extremely well. His three points percentage is like twenty four, twenty three. Like that's not extremely well. To be fair, that is that is fixable if he. No, it. it's not, Ben. No, it's not. It's not shooting. They always say it's fixable. Tell me one player that it's been fixed on, Ben. I mean, Lonzo Ball last year was not a bad shooter. Came I wouldn't call could, him a good shooter. Could, okay, but if if Lamelo can let's look up. You know, what? I'm looking up Lonzo Ball UCLA stats. Let's look up his three point percentage. I promise you, it was better than twenty four percent. I'm sure it was. Uh, forty one point two. You can look it up on Sports Reference. Well, Lamelo was also playing in New Zealand, which had a longer uh, three pointer. So the NCAA three point line is shorter, which helped Lonzo. Seventeen percent, though, Ben. No, seventeen. I'm not, I'm not arguing that he's not a good shooter right now. I think that it's fixable with a shooting coach on a good team. It's not fully fixable, but he can boost that to thirty. I don't know. Well, okay, but the Bulls. I I don't trust the Bulls to do that. So there we go. I'll point That's that fine. out. There. Isaac Okoro. Um, like I said, he would not be a top eight or nine pick, but the poor draft class that many teams need an athletic director puts him at four. From uh, you can take you can make make the case for Obi Toppin, I've, Denny Advaja. I've seen the Bulls like a lot of talk about Denny Advaja. I I've seen a I lot. I have too, and Arcinius loves those European guys. He really does. But you know what else Arcinius is the best at? Second round yeah. picks. Yeah. Gary Harris, Nikola Jokic, Monte yeah. Morris. Three as the last five or six years that have produced in big ways. Um. His draft classes have been so good. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna point out really quickly. 
I'm just like, no, some of these guys stayed, some of them didn't. Wait, who did I have? I made a slide on this. Um, okay, Paul Reed, Arturo, Tyler Bay. Tyler Bay is actually someone I really, really like. Um, have you watched his tape? He seems. I, I have. If I were to, if if I were to want the Bulls to pick one guy in the second round, he's a bit of a you're at forty four. It'd probably be Tyler Bay. He doesn't really have a position. That's my issue with him. Like, okay, he, that's what that's the that's the modern NBA. Okay, uh, I could see it, but definitely a second rounder. So yeah, he's a second rounder. Um, hundred percent. Defensive highlights. See, this is when you know the kids go when he's defensive highlights. Look at that. I'm. I'm not show. I'm not sharing. I'm just briefly watching. Wow, he's athletic. Okay, it just makes me like him even more. Um, usually I watch all these kids like 25, 30 minute highlights. Um, and make a big doc or something like. I mean, I did this in July, so I guess that counts. But like, I spent a lot of time on this in the NFL draft. Finding guys I like. Um, you like I definitely Arturo? like Tyler Bay. Arturo's big, yeah, but we have Wendell Carter. Um, and I feel like we should give him a year um, before we give up on him. And I don't know if Arturo is the right fit for Chicago because we just got Daniel Gafford, who I actually have high hopes for as well. Um, Paul Reed, I think, is solid. He's a little bit older. I like someone younger, and Tyler Bay was just a sophomore last year. I'm 99.9% certain. Yeah, Ben, there are a lot of okay guys, but I'm not really sold on anyone. I feel like usually, like last year, I was sold on Kobe White. I was thrilled we picked him. And I think he had a very good rookie campaign. Um, Daniel Gafford, I wanted Bull Bull more, but Daniel Gafford was my number two there, and we got him. Um, so I was very happy with last year's draft. Of course, our free agency was absolutely terrible, and our coaching hires were absolutely terrible. Um but yeah, but with a new, but with Billy Donovan, this Jim he Boylan. got his Jim Boylan yeah. is gone and will never probably be employed again, which I'm <laughs> so happy about. Um, so yeah, hopefully the Bulls can at least make up improvements this year. It's kind of been in the wrong direction, so we have to. We just have to change it. it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna screen share it, Ben. Um, the full mock draft. Uh, shall we? No, nah, I don't think we need to. I don't think we need to. We already talked about this I guess in prior right. episodes. I guess um, and Ben and I have homework and stuff to do, but we got some work. Should we be live streaming it, Ben? Should we be doing a live, yeah. a live? I, maybe when the Bulls are, maybe when the Bulls are about to pick, and we can. I feel like, like we should have some, the ESPN thing up. Can we live stream it? I mean, we probably can, but like we get copyrighted and all that. Yeah, I mean, we could watch any... it. We could watch it and do it on our phones, where we're like, like we have cameras off and we're like watching the TV, or like I can be unmuted and like no one's in the room, and then it's just the TV at like a hundred percent, so then the, the viewers can hear. Well, I think we should maybe I... analyze the first three picks and then see what the would maybe decide if somehow if like Anthony Edwards drops or some crazy thing happens. We could but like, he's not. We I know mean, it's Gafford. Tim Worlds are probably going to pick Anthony Edwards or Lamelo at one, which makes it interesting because usually we know who's. The but we don't one actually now. know what the Warriors are going to do. Like they, they they're, they're taking they're, James Wiseman or trading him. Yeah, exactly. So there's two options there. If they if they trade the pick, I don't think they're going to trade it though because James Wiseman and them has been rumors for forever. I know, but there's also been rumors of them trading. <laughs> it's it's kind of like a two sided thing. I mean, Isaac Okor also did not personally work out. I think each team got ten to sixteen personal workouts that they could like watch and he was not one of them um oh, yeah so yeah bulls are all in on lamello <laughs> i don't gonna, want lamello he's not gonna fall that far. he's he's going top three i'm almost trade up for lamello picking up steam that would be bad that would be like trading up for mitch trubisky yeah i i chicago does artinius does not know but artinius also just probably cares about no, he's such, I trust him. His I trust him too, but Lamelo, no, don't pick Lamelo. Don't pick down him. on him. I'm he's not, not good, Ben. I'd rather have Tyler Bay than him. No ticket no, sales. Do. Um, and that's and an important. Likes, they'd rather Lamelo, but Jerry Reinsdorf might might care more about the ticket sales. I mean, <laughs> he might be looking I mean, into. Ben, I think... we got we got to talk about Tom Larusso. We didn't really touch on that. 
Oh God, Tony. She picked him because they were golf buddies, and she had a DUI. Yet he the still. It's one Dude. of the worst hires in sports history, in my opinion. It might be the worst. Not only is he out of touch, but he's like he's said things that are just racist. It's just he was racist. Like, he was like, "We we don't kneel for the we don't kneel for the American flag." I I, I don't think that's sincere. Like, what is he talking about? There's so, so many like minority players on the White Sox. It just doesn't seem like it'll be a fit at all. Like, I don't think it'll be a great fit at all. And he's wasting their talent. The Sox, Jerry Rod said, "I just said the Sox are probably the best or second best team in baseball talent wise." And, and they're you could, still young. Like oh. you could tell Rick Hahn in his press conference, he said it's the nat- natural progression of things. He was just forced to say that. Like that is not his hire at all. He would never have gone with Tony Larusa. So I feel kind of bad for Rick Hahn. He's built this team and now he has to go with the journal. Can I talk really quickly about Rick Hahn? Because I mean, and one time told me that. Actually, should I say it better? Uh, uh, I'll, 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 I'll keep that a lot. It's currently only Tim Beatson. Like it's a, no, one, no one watches this far. You can probably say it. So, Ben, Rachel, do you want to date Rick Khan? Briefly. They didn't really, I mean, she, she she said she was, like, really good, like, close with him for a while, and then, like. Where do you go to college? Michigan? Michigan. Go Blue! Psych! Hey, Michigan undergrad? It's a pretty good school. It's a good school, but not as good as Notre Dame. It's not um, I'll admit. I'll admit. It, who is the Supreme Court Justice? Michigan? Okay. I'm Notre not even. Dame. We're not going to get political here. We've already been. <laughs> we don't want to get political with Ben out here. We already have. Been, it was objective had, analysis, though. We've had James Panton, the most political person man. we know. James says a lot. James says a lot. Wait, do you want to shout out James' stream yard? If... Yes, I actually do. Everyone follow Panton Films on youtube um but ben just said no one watches this far which he's probably right um and also we can also let people know we have like a special guest oh what did i just do Brad, ben we, do, okay are we back we're back ben okay we've so we've been back we're we've been live for 25 minutes and 17 seconds not missing a beat we're, we're the viewers we're the viewers world we respond to all their questions next yeah, week next week at wednesday 7 30 p.m we do have a special guest coming on, uh, our second. He runs a college football new- news website actually called College Football News, and he's he does podcasts, he does radio shows. He's he, he's on he's, 670 The Score every single week, and I listen to it on Twitch during my schoolwork. He's considered a pretty uh, influential college football writer. So Dave Revson sh- loves, loves his work. He says and, he reads it. And Pete and Mr. Futek, I should say, um, said he likes Dave Are Revson. we calling him Pete, Ben? Uh, we let's we, we can stay with Mr. Futek. I I feel like I feel we like called, but we called Mr. Evans and Dave. Oh, Dave. Well, we can ask him. He'll tell us. I'm sure we can call him Pete because I. That's and does he go with cameras on or cameras off? Uh, you. I can ask him if you want. I I thought we would do. Cameras I know on six seventy always says cameras on, even though it's a radio show. Well, I if you want to do cameras, I, I was assuming we would just do it like we did last time, which was cameras off in the interview. I feel but, like cameras on because the Mr. Evans interview, Ben. Like, he's, like, my mentor. Like, I look up to Mr. Evans. Like, that was, like, I I think P- Futek is fabulous. And I love to be in the position he is. But, like, I don't follow. I'm going to be completely honest. I don't follow P- Futek. Like, I follow Dave Revson. I don't know as much about him. Now, it's different for you, of course. We prob- we flip roles in that in that sense. Me with Mr. Revson and you with Mr. Futek. But I think he'd be fine. I don't know. I think he'd be fine with ask, either. Ask Chris, Ben. Ask Chris. He's open to either, so we can we can discuss it. But I yes. think that'll be our next special guest. We're, I don't know how like other special guests we might have lined up, but we'll see. We'll see. My actually, I won't, let's just say we might have a former All American Notre Dame linebacker. Not a man detail. I wish. That maybe I'll sign a man detail. You, you would actually get views if we had man Maybe Dateo. maybe I'll maybe I'll text man Dateo's girlfriend and see if she can line something up. <laughs> <laughs> you know he did that to get Heisman votes. I mean, he was going to get Heisman votes either way. He was the best. He got best. wasn't he second? Yes, overall. He yeah, he was big. Game. That's huge. He didn't. Play I think. I, I think sadly the last defensive player was Charles Woodson to get it. Or no, Desmond Howard. I mean, Desmond Howard. No, no, Charles Woodson. You're right. I am. Charles and what, 2000 or 97? What well, was Desmond Howard? I don't know. Did Desmond Howard get it? Did he get I, it? 
Real maybe quick, I'm, we, maybe I'm been, tripping. We've been rambling a little, but I'll I'll check. Heisman Howard. Uh, he did the Heisman pose, but oh, but he didn't get it because I always it. remember that the pick six. Yeah, he's like that. Yeah, that's his pose, but he just. I know Charles Woodson got it, but yeah. I was not. Oh no no, Desmond Howard did get it. Wait, let's see. He got the Heisman in ninety-one. I've lost Brad. Wow. <laughs> 